Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm going to be going over voicing, pitch, velocity, and note. It is this section right here. Now, velocity. Velocity is how hard you hit a key at any given time. I have push in front of me right now, and uh, I'll just turn off this. So I'm going to hit it kind of lightly, and you'll notice that it's kind of right there. It's detecting that very lightly. As I start to mash I can go all the way up to like maximum velocity. So what we can do with this, you know, kind of basically is map the velocity to amplitude. So as I'm, oh, I want to move up. So right now it's quiet. And now it's kind of loud. Right? So what you can do with this is you can We'll just bypass that, have that to that. I can have this map to a filter. So the filter opens up the harder I press, or the harder I pound a, a pad. <laughs> um, so you can get more of like a natural, because like, you know, consistently I can't get the same kind of velocity. It's kind of weird, but like this gives you an opportunity to play something a bit more like evolving and more natural and then you get a kind of a cool effect. So as I, you know, pound it harder the filter is or pound it harder the filter is more open. As I hit the the pad softer the filter is more closed. Right? Pretty cool. And that's velocity. So I'll remove all modulators. Note, note is where in relation to the key that you're playing. So as I move up, here, I'll just do that. Really low. Up, getting up there. All right, it's the note. So what happens automatically in, in synths is that we'll track and I will you'll move up in pitch. The oscillator will change its pitch relative to what note you're playing. That's pitch tracking, and uh, that's done automatically. Um, you can kind of have filter tracking, which is this guy right here. You can key track the filter. Um, you can also do it manually, so you can get kind of a different feel. So as you move up the keyboard, the filter opens. I'll make it a bit more obvious. Right, and that happens automatically. And that's per voice. Um, yeah, and that's velocity and note. You can do a bunch of cool things with note. For instance, you know, you can uh, map this to LFO rate. You can map this to the LFO rate, and you know, as you go up in your scale or whatever, the LFO gets faster or slower. Or the velocity can change the rate. So you can get like really interesting kind of whatever sounds and you can just go crazy anyway yeah that those are velocity and note and uh mighty useful and good to have all right so next up we have our voicing so voicing is kind of kind of interesting to explain um it's the amount of keys or the amount of sounds you can play at once so keep an eye on unisons we have one voice of unison, and then we can have two. As this changes, here, I'll show you. Okay, I'm a, I got a better way of explaining it. So right now, it's uh, mono. I have mono, and I can only play one note at a time. One key, one key at a time. And I can't play more than, I can't play chords, right? It doesn't work, right? I can bump up the unison, and notice that goes to two. So I'm playing two and my maximum is two, right? Two voices. So as a, if I hit a note, I'm playing two voices in unison and that's still the maximum. So it kind of does the math for you, which is pretty cool. So I'll bump this one down. So say I have 16 voices. I can play 16. I can play a note that's 16 keys at the same time, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to explain kind of a use case for you. So say you 
you have like a bunch of units and you don't want to like max out or blow up your CPU or make like a cloudy mess. You will have, you know, eight unison, so that'll be, yeah, 24. So right, if I hit one note, I'm playing eight voices. If I play two, that's 16. If I play three, that's 24, and I've effectively maxed out my maximum voice count. So say, I'll do it kind of simply. Say, yeah, so a chord is three voices if you have one one uh, one voice unison in your oscillator, right? So if I have a release, that's pretty long, right? You notice that the voice is still activated until it fades out. If I play a chord, no problem. But if I play a chord and then I move up to like a different set of keys, the release will cancel out and that's called note stealing, right? Because that is the maximum amount of poly polyphony I'm allowed to have right kind of chokes it and this is the thing uh, with the virus uh, there's a maximum of like 64 or something voices and you use them with like different filters and stuff like that no stealing is something that you kind of it's it's a it's an aesthetic thing it sounds kind of interesting so how we mitigate no note stealing when I move from that is I can double this to six six voices, six uh, note polyphony. So I can play a chord, three note chord, and as that's fading out, I'll play the next one, and then the releases can still kind of sustain. Right? As opposed to, oops. Right? So just keep an eye on that. Cool thing about Serum is it'll automatically allocate you more voices the more you have unison. So pay attention to this number right here. So yeah, it's pretty. Uh, so we'll have a seven, which is you know magic number, right? You'd be more apparent. So I'll set this back to three. And then I'll set this back to six. Right? You can hear it. I'm good at explaining stuff. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, I'm just going to go back to mono mode. So that's one note. Right? So we can only play one note. And if we try to play another note, it'll just bump up to the, the highest one. It's like a note priority type thing. Um, so we'll go legato. So what that does is if I, if I, okay, with, with it off, I'll hit portamento up. With it off, if I hold the note and then play another one, it'll just jump up to the next one immediately. Right? Oops. Like this. At legato, it does it always, right? Right here, how it like kind of like jumps up. So with always, it will, with it off, it will, if you don't have more than one note held, it'll just jump up to the next one. But with always on, it will remember the previous note and it'll stay on that kind of pitch tracking type thing. So you can get it like that, you know, housey kind of thing. Scaled, it changes the uh, portamento time depending on where you are relative to the note you're playing. Right? right, so the note next to it will happen kind of faster as opposed to the note an octave up if you have scaled on. Right? So it kind of, it's more, I don't know, the pitch tracking or the pitch bend or whatever is more analog with a UE on the end. Anyway, um, and you can adjust the curve. So you can have the curve like this. It will kind of fastly track up and then it'll slowly kind of climb up there. Right? 
right? Or it can go, it can like zap up if you have it, the curve like that. Bad example, let me try again. So it's like it curves up. And those are, that is, oh, also, let's just mention your pitch bend down here. Which is, you know, they're on, they're like a MIDI thing. You have your pitch, pitch bend, and your range here, 12. Well, it's the default is 2. I'd like, sometimes you like to go to 12, and then negative 12. Right? That's your, your pitch bend right here. And then your mod wheel. Um, and you can map that. It's kind of like an expression pedal type thing. You can map that to basically anything. Um, you can drag it from here, or you can right click mod source mod wheel. So right now you can be like mod wheel is very useful because you can map that to multiple things and uh, kind of have like a bunch of things going on at once as you open the mod wheel. Anyway, uh, wow, I'm pretty bright down there. Uh, Hope you guys learned stuff. Take care and have a good one.